Dear friend, welcome back to my channel again. And now today also I have brought some content related to Bible and Superbook episode. Elisha followed his mentor Elijah through four important locations. Starting in Gilgal, journeying to Bethel, then on to Jericho, and finally to the Jordan River. Each location reflects a significant moment in biblical history. At Gilgal, the prophet Samuel confirmed Saul as Israel's first king, about 150 years before the time of Elisha. Long before that, during the time of Joshua, Gilgal was where the Israelites celebrated their first Passover in the Promised Land. This church was built in honor of that early Passover. Bethel was located 12 miles north of Jerusalem. The patriarch Jacob stopped here when fleeing from his brother Esau. This is where Jacob dreamt of a ladder, or staircase, extending to heaven with angels going up and down. This excavation reveals an ancient house in Bethel. What did the prophets tell you in Jericho, Elisha? After Bethel, God called Elijah to Jericho, a town just north of the Dead Sea, less than five miles west of the Jordan River. Jericho was the city Joshua conquered when God made the walls of the city crumble. <laughs> this spring in Jericho is called Elisha's Fountain, named after a miracle performed by Elisha purifying the waters. The spring still flows clean to this day. The Lord wants me to go to the Jordan River. The Jordan River is the principal river of the Holy Land. It runs from the snowy peaks of Mount Hermon to the Dead Sea. Elijah parted the waters of the Jordan, a miracle very similar to one performed by Joshua at this same river when the Israelites first came into the Promised Land. The Jordan River would remain an important part of history when more than 800 years later, John baptized Jesus in these waters. This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. From Gilgal to Bethel to Jericho to the Jordan, Elijah made his journey through biblical history before being taken up into heaven. Now let me share with you about Zacchaeus. That is Superbook Season 5, Episode 3. What does Jesus see in me, dear friend? I wonder that you also ask this question sometimes in your life. Now let's see. What does Jesus see in me? Dear friend, the people in Jericho could not believe that Jesus would stop to talk with Zacchaeus. Didn't he knew that Zacchaeus was a notorious sinner who cheated them at tax time? Why would Lord Jesus Christ choose him and not ask to be a guest at home of a Pharisee or other religious leader? Didn't Jesus see how they kept the law and all the good things they did? Why did he choose Zacchaeus of all the people in Jericho? Dear friend, we can read about this in Luke chapter 19 verse 5 through 7. Jesus didn't care about outer things. He looks inside to see people's hearts. He knows everyone's thoughts and deepest desires. He sees their fears and their passions. Jesus saw something in Zacchaeus that no one else could see from the outside. He saw Zacchaeus's emptiness despite all his possessions and wealth. He saw Zacchaeus's determination and desires to see him. In spite of what people were thinking, Jesus knew he could feel the emptiness inside of Zacchaeus and change his heart. On the other hand, the Pharisees believed their good deeds and obedience to the law were all that was needed to be saved. They didn't need Jesus. They were doing quite well without him. He was a distraction that needed to be removed. Dear friend, Jesus often rebuked the Pharisees for their hypocrisy, self-righteousness and placing importance on outward appearance. Dear friend, let's read from Luke chapter 11 verse 37 through 54. When Jesus had finished speaking, a Pharisee invited him to eat with him. So he went in and reclined at the table. 
But the Pharisee, noticing that Jesus did not finish wash before the meal, was surprised. Then the Lord said to him, Now then, you Pharisees, clean the outside of the cup, but inside you are full of greed and wickedness. You foolish people, did not the one who made the outside make the inside also? But give what is inside the dish to the poor, and everything will be clean for you. Woe to you, Pharisees, because you give God a tenth of your mint, rue, and all other kinds of garden herbs, but you neglect justice and the love of God. You should have practiced the latter without leaving the former undone. Woe to you, Pharisees, because you love the most important seats in the synagogues and greetings in the marketplace. Woe to you, because you are like unmarked graves, which men walk over without knowing it. One of the experts in the law answered him, Teacher, when you say these things, you insult us also. Jesus replied, And you experts in the law, woe to you, because you load people down with burdens they can hardly carry, and you yourself will not lift one finger to help them. Woe to you, because you build tombs for the prophets, and it was your forefathers who killed them. So you testify that you approve of what your forefathers did. They killed the prophets, and you build their tombs. Because of this, God in his wisdom said, I will send them prophets and apostles, some of whom they will kill, and others they will persecute. Therefore, this generation will be held responsible for the blood of all the prophets that has been shed since the beginning of the world, from the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who was killed between the altar and sanctuary. Yes, I tell you, this generation will be held responsible for it all. Woe to you experts in the law, because you have taken away the key to knowledge. You yourself have not entered and have hindered those who are entering. When Jesus left there, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law began to oppose him fiercely and to besides him with questions, waiting to catch him in something he might see. So dear friends, these are the Bible verses I just read from Luke chapter 11 verse 37 through 54, where we see about Jesus often rebuked the Pharisees for their hypocrisy, self-righteousness and placing importance on outward appearance. The Bible tells us that man is concerned about the outside, but God looks inside at the heart. God focuses on what we can become in Him instead of what we are right now. 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 7 It doesn't matter how we view ourselves or how others see us. God knows who we really are, what are we about, and what we can be. He knows why we do what we do and how we think. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 2 says, People may be pure in their own eyes, but the Lord examines their motives. God has a plan and a purpose for each of us to fulfill. He formed us and knows all about us more than anyone else. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 Jesus changed Zacchaeus that day. He saw in him what others could not see. Dear friends, I hope you are encouraged by listening to the Bible verses and the content I just shared with you about Zacchaeus and we human beings living in this world in Jesus' time and now. So, I hope you have learned what Jesus sees in everyone of us or in me. Thank you for being with us 
throughout this video till now. Please like, share, comment and subscribe our channel for more videos similar to this. And dear friend, don't forget to read the Bible and be encouraged and renewed every day.